I don't know. I don't know. First thing I'm going to say in it is well played Arsenal. Um, that first half. <clears throat> that first half, yeah. We got shown levels in it. I ain't even going to lie. The 30... In fact, from, from when we equalised, because I feel like Saka's goal was a moment of brilliance. From when we equalised, Arsenal just turned up the heat. And we're going to get into it. Listen, 2-2, two, two, Arsenal 2, Liverpool 2. We leave the Emirates of a point. Second in the league. City now go top after beating Southampton. If it's the first time here, man, smash the like button. Uh, make sure you drop a comment. Let me know who your man of the match was. And of course, um, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well if you're doing that already. But let's get into it, man. Let's get into it. Listen, man, um, I've got to say it from now, man. Well played Arsenal for, for large parts of that game. Um, and I'm more referring to the first half, especially. I feel like we couldn't get a hold of the ball. It was wave after wave of attack. I don't think they created clear opportunities, but I think it was very, very... We were very fortunate to not um, concede a penalty. For the um for the Canate challenge on Martinelli, they did score again after, anyways. Um, so I won't I won't dwell on that too much. But it's a weird one that game. It was a very much a weird one because um I feel like we were on top in the first 15, 10 minutes, and then and then Saka absolutely ripped. He fucked up Robo blood. Madueke done it last week. Saka thought Saka just done what Madueke did, but added the end product. He sent him sliding all the way to Jerusalem, blood. It was tapped. Bro, Robbo got that way. It was embarrassing. Oh, my days. Listen, I've got to give credit to Saka. Listen, man, they was they were saving him up in the in the hyperbolic check in the hyperbolic time chamber, and they let him loose, fam. He tumped up Robbo, blood. And he's some say he's still sliding while I'm recording this video, blood. So if I didn't give enough props for that goal, I'm giving the props now, man. So Big up Saka. For me, he was my man of the match, but we'll go further into it. We'll talk more about that later on in the video. I have to keep it a buck. I do have to keep it a buck. Um, after that, I feel like Liverpool started to get a hold of the game again. Um, we scored from the corner. I thought at that point we were going to impose ourselves and Arsenal just flipped that switch, blood. They flipped the switch. We was holding on for dear life. And of course... They get the goal from a set piece, but it probably should have come from open play anyway. With the amount of space their wingers were getting against our wing backs and the amount of joy they were getting in the wide areas was crazy. The midfield was non-existent and we were getting overpowered in those wide flanks. So you got to give credit to Miko Arteta for that one. And of course, in the second half, we needed a response. And we got that. Now, is there context to that? Yeah, let's be honest. You know what I'm saying? Gabriel goes down with an injury. Um, I think it was, we, we came up, in the, at the start of the second half, it was 50-50. It became kind of a scrappy game. There was no real movement to it. Gabriel then goes down injured of something. It was quite innocuous from the Darwin Nunes challenge. And then after that, um, Arsenal started to slow the game down, open things up. Uh, sorry, slow the game down and close things up. And then I feel like Arsenal, like, bro, I'm sorry, but dribbling towards the corner flag in the 71st minute, guys, like, I still think Arsenal probably could have got at us the way we were playing. It wasn't a great performance. We weren't at our best, but we leave with something. That's what, The only thing I can say that's positive about this performance is that even though Arsenal had injuries, we left with something. Because for me, Liverpool were not at our best today. Arsenal were better than us today, in my opinion. Just like I thought Chelsea were better than us in the first half. Don't get me wrong, Arsenal didn't pose much of a threat in the second half because of their injuries. And at that point, it was whether we could get back into the game and whether we can get another. And I will give credit to Van Dijk for the header. I will give credit to Salah. Salah again, Mo Salah is inevitable in these games. And Trent was having an absolute stinker for me. He was not good, but what did he do? X Factor. That is what Liverpool have. Like it or hate it, you're not going to, like if you're an Arsenal fan, you're going to hate what I'm saying, but this is what we have that other teams don't. And it's X Factor. It's match winners. Whether we have those match winners next season is a different conversation, but we have match winners. The ball from Trent is absolutely spot on. And then Salah, the ball from Nunes, well played, great run, pills off. First time Nunes actually peeled off and got some space into the final third. And then, you know, that's all it takes for Liverpool to score goals. You know what I'm saying? We have the attacking prowess to just go and do that and flip a game on its head, even when we're under the cosh. And people are going to look at this as a negative. I'm, I'm going to look at certain performances as a negative for me. I feel like a lot of players weren't up to their best today. But uh, Van Dijk was still very, very good. Konati was absolutely excellent in dealing with Martinelli in wide areas, especially when Trent... Um, was struggling. He backed up Trent very well. Kanate was absolutely Liverpool's best player today, without a doubt. 
And that shows how good Arsenal were for one of our best players to have to be our centre-back. Van Dijk, brilliant with scoring the header, shows why he should be in these competitions as the best defender in the world, of course. And Mo Salah being Mo Salah, who was inevitable. Now, I'm not going to spout too much nonsense about how good Liverpool were, because he weren't good over the course of the 90 minutes. The first half, uh, large parts of the first half, was abysmal. And it was. But you have to give credit to players like Declan Rice, who was brilliant today, in my opinion. Saka, who was my man of the match. Um, I think that... Uh, the time that Gabriel was on the pitch, he done he done the right as well. I think Timber for me was probably the one. In fact, I think at, at right back before Partey got ripped by Diaz the one time, Partey was brilliant in that first half. I think even um, for me, Timber was losing his duels with Salah at times, so that was more of a 50-50, but it was more about how often could you get Salah on the ball. And Arsenal done very well to cut the supply lines to our wingers. I think that's one thing that they've done that no other team has done this season, and they cut the supply lines from our wingers, and they've done very, 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 very well with that. And it made us struggle, and it made us go long and kind of disrupted our flow a lot, and Arsenal deserved to be up at half-time. But again, to lead the game at 2-2 for me, Listen, Arsenal had most of their players. Of course, they didn't have Calafiori and um, Odegaard. They had most of their players in the starting lineup. They lost Gabriel and Timber towards the latter ends of the game. And we punished them. we done what big teams do. And if you give us a sniff, we'll punish you. And that's what we did. And listen, I'll take the draw. Um, I'm not going to act like it was a scintillating performance. I'm not really happy with the performance. As I said, I still feel like Robbo, big conversation, big conversation needs to be had about Andy Robertson. If I'm being honest with you today, absolute. He showed the reason why this is probably going to be his last season in the Liverpool shirt or as a main starter. Simic has came on and was better, in my opinion. And of course, Gakpo didn't really make a massive difference apart from uh, coming on for Diaz as well. I know people are going to say Diaz had a stinker. Uh, I just think the supply line to him got cut off because when he did get the ball a few times in the second half, he made things work. Um, so... Again, credit to Nunes for making the run. Sobers line, when he came on, did offer, offer us a bit more security in midfield. So um, credit to Sobers life for that. I know he didn't, uh, for me, again, in the positions he got the ball in, in, in the advanced stages, should have done better, should have done, should, should do better with his shot. But again, I guess that's just the confidence of where he's at right now. But off the ball, he offered that more stability and helped um, track him back and defending and all of that stuff. But listen, man, you know, let me know who your man of the match was. Mine's was hands down by Mikhail Saki. was absolutely brilliant. Gave uh, Robert a torrid time today. Arsenal 2, Liverpool 2. Let me know in the comments. Listen, man, I'm going to be very shameless at some point in the, at some point in the roundup because for me, the a draw suits Liverpool more than it does Arsenal in the position that they're in after losing to Bournemouth. So um, we have to bounce back against uh, Brighton. We do our thing. And then against Man City, we're going to have to go take all three points, man. But listen, guys, it's been another episode of Big Six Fans. Make sure you subscribe. Like, that was my take on the game. Um, credit to Arsenal. And you guys showed us why the Emirates is such a hard place to go and win. So big up yourselves and we'll talk and we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, people. Like, subscribe and comment.